doing that in slow motion. I thought about going like. I also Whoa. wait. Uh, don't we alternate? Uh, probably, but you picked a topic, so I figured I'd do the intros. This is why I can't keep track <laughs> because we don't actually alternate. I don't believe you. I had go for it. Would you like I, to I, do an intro, Gary? You can do the intro. Not particularly, no, <laughs> no. no. I like doing what I plan for him. I don't like doing what I don't plan for him. But I did plan for it this time, thinking, well, I skipped week. last week, so it must be my turn. <laughs> well, you know, we did skip a week last week, so technically, <sighs> really, it's just me being arbitrary. That that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how much energy Chris has. Yeah, basically. yeah. That that that's really the determining factor. Anyway, this is a podcast about things wherein uh, someone comes up with a topic, uh, usually Allison, uh, but this week it's going to be Gary, uh, and the rest of us try to figure out what the topic is uh, without knowing the topic in advance, and we try to have a conversation about it. But probably we just talk about other shit, uh, and we do it every week, or you know, most weeks. I mean, we do it every week. We happen we happen to record it. Yeah, sometimes. Right. Yeah, <laughs> with, well, we record with, it. Fair regularity. We record it. Yeah. We don't have these conversations without recording it. That would be weird. No, we do. It's just called Slack. Well, okay. We have conversations all the that's time. That's fair. That's yeah, and about a topic that we don't know anything about. That, that's fair. <laughs> so much of the world. Uh, I'm sorry. I interrupted the intro. Were you done with the intro? Have we? I am now. The intros? I mean, you can add to the intro if you think that it was missing something. I wasn't actually paying attention to it. You start talking <laughs> intro and like, I just... That's Chris. Chris, Gary, Allison. That's all you need to know. That's the part oh, that, that I, I that's like the I part that, Yeah, that's the part that was missing. My subconscious tunes into and, I, and I'm like, okay, now we can start. All right. Yeah, Today's topic old. is Emir. Emir. Y-M-I-R. Oh, uh, isn't Damn that... It. Isn't that like a, a Norse god or like a Nordic? I can't tell if Gary's disappointed or excited. <laughs> Devastated, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit disappointed because it, it doesn't seem like the name of a Norse god. It seems like some kind of other word to me, but. Sorry. But yeah. Sorry, I know about mythology. I kind of do this a lot. <laughs> I, but I felt like this one was like edge case enough where you'd be like, oh, that's fascinating. I think it's a type of animal pelt that you wear. Yeah. Well, Does I mean, that make you feel guess, better, Gary? My second guess was that it was like something in the Nordic pantheon that wasn't a god, like a place, like Emir or like a, a thing. Like Emir was the name of, of like the sword of, I don't yeah. know, uh, Loki or something. Yeah. <laughs> Loki, Loki's sword was Emir or something. Um, but tell us more. Tell yeah, us what do you what do you know I'm about sure Amir? I I actually bumped into Amir <laughs> because there is a technical product called Amir, and I'm like, what a weird name! So I googled it, yeah. and I'm like, oh, okay, well, Norse God makes sense for this or whatever. Is it a company that is 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 the company American? Uh, Canadian. It's it's not. I mean, it's a company. It's a guy. It's a dude. I mean, his name is okay. Amir, but the product's name is Amir. Yeah, uh, and so it's a serverless thing, but uh, but I but I was I was fascinated, and as I do, I fell down the rabbit hole, and then I was like, "What the hell does this even mean?" And then I googled it, and was really excited that it was not. I don't know. I was thinking like it was going to be like something backwards or an acronym, but it was actually a thing. And so, what I'm does not the sure god why. feel like? What's yeah. he in charge of? Uh, take, take us down the rabbit hole with you. Take us down the rabbit hole with you. <laughs> I mean, based like generally just mentioned in four poems and sucks at the utter of, I can't say it. Oh, we, we, blah. Cool. <laughs> A, you can't tell oh, if that was you trying or you. <laughs> no, that was trying. A U O with, it's not an umlaut, but some other character over top. <laughs> U M P. <laughs> and, and at this point, Gary was never allowed to bring topic again. <laughs> That's the character's official name, not an umlaut. <laughs> yeah, not an umlaut. Um, so, so he's only mentioned in four poems, so he doesn't have a lot of information about him. Is that the thing? Basically, yeah. It's just like an edge case god. That's it. I, I, I have decided the name of my band. 
Edge Case God. Edge Case God. Nice. I'm actually going to write that down because I like that a lot. I don't have a band, but I feel like that phrase needs to be somewhere in my. I I'm have been. You don't have a band yet, to be honest. Um, you have enough instruments for a one man situation. That's so. true. I actually recorded some mandolin this past weekend and some French horn. Like so together? A, so, or or yeah. in, independently? Well, I mean, not at the same time. Right, obviously not at the same time. It's only you're, one thing. I mean, I guess you... Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah. But that Probably technically too. possible to do a, a one-man band scenario with, with the mandolin and the French horn if you like position the French yeah. horn somewhere, mounted it on something. Uh, but at what point do you change from just recording music to to being a band or like a musician <laughs> the moment other people listen oh to record. i i have opinions on this shockingly um well that's what we're here for <laughs> yes i feel like music really parallels like the dev world that it there's like a huge imposter syndrome right yeah so like it's really easy to be like Oh, I'm a musician, but I only do like, like I know some people that are classically trained and, and I'm like, Hey, let's play. And I'm like, here's some chords. And they're like, Oh, I, I only read sheet music. Like that, that like that, own, like, okay, that's fantastic. If you gave me sheet music for my guitar, I'd be like, huh, all right, sweet. Like I'll I'm figure it out. I'll just, <laughs> yeah. I'll just, just play. I'll figure it out. Okay. I mean, I'll catch the chord. And if it's a pretty standard progression, we'll get there. And if not, well, we'll pick another song. It's fine. But like, if you handed me chord sheet for my French horn, I'd be like, I guess I'll figure it out. Cause I, I like, I have to transpose and it, you know, it's just dumb. Like it, I'm not dumb, but I mean, it's, you know, like I, I guess I have it like both sides. Like I read sheet music on sheet music instruments and then on guitar, I'd, play by ear or chord sheets or whatever. Uh, so like I get both sides, but but that like that heavy imposter syndrome. So I think when people are like, well, I'm only sort of a musician. Like, absolutely not. Like, I think this is one of those clear things in life that is a binary thing. Like if you take joy in music in any meaningful way, right? Like you're a musician. Like you don't have to be the best in the world. You don't have to be like good. But like, if you can get in there and like connect and like latch into that, that energy with other people that are making music, like that's it. That's that's the threshold, you're a musician. And so this past weekend I was with um, a friend that plays piano. And uh, like, I told her like, hey, you're gonna, you're gonna record. Like, I mean, cause I don't play piano cause I'm not a musician obviously, right? So um, <laughs> like sit down and like, you know plug the keyboard in and get it all set up, headphones on and, you know, play. and. Uh, and it was, there was that, like that barrier, like, well, I, I can't do this. Cause I've never, I'm not, not a recording musician. Like, okay, well actually you are, because that's what we're doing right now. So like enough with the bullshit and let's just do it. Uh, and we did, and it was fantastic. And I mean, will these songs ever leave my computer? Probably not. It doesn't matter. Like the, the point wasn't the, the product. The point was the creation. Also, as a result of that, I read this book by, oh, I skipped the name. I'm glad I brought the topic today because I didn't bring anything. Um, I will interject while you're walking away from the computer. Um, Austin Cleon. Oh, go ahead. No, fine. You can continue now that you've inter interjected into, into my interjection. That's fine. Continue. Austin Cleon wrote this book about, uh, it's like Great Artists Steal or something like that, like his thing uh, of the book. Called How to Steal Like an Artist. Thank you. <laughs> it's, and there's, it's a trilogy. So I've only read the first one. And the other two are sitting over there. Um, and I mean, it's like a super short read, like, like an hour in the porch, maybe. Um, but like, so I read <laughs> it in a regular room, <laughs> <laughs> but like 90 minutes somewhere else. Um, so, but there was one of the chapters talked about like, like making it a habit, right? Like, uh, and I, on my drive back from this music thing, like I started thinking about like, uh, like the concept of fulfillment and why like stepping out of like the normal day to day and creating in an environment that's not like normal, like it's so satisfying. Uh, so I just put on my schedule like every day this week for an hour, every morning from 8am to 9am create. That's it. Like, 
So like, I don't answer email for work. I don't do anything else, but I, I, I mean, so far it's good at this desk because it's like miserable outside, but like some of that's been playing around with music. Some of it's been just writing. And I, like, it doesn't matter if anyone sees it by today, but having the, doing the work is important. I feel. I've been, I've been, Aaron and I have, have, have come to the same conclusion, basically, like just to do the thing that we want to be doing uh, and making time for it and just making it work. Um, so we were, and I, I have been, while they've been gone, I've been writing for my D&D campaigns, plural, um, writing a crap ton for them, actually. Um, and like, like, ultimately, I, I like, I want to write more in various different ways and so like that's just one way of, of it's just one outlet that it's coming to and like <laughs> the the end result of this of this writing is that i'm continuing this like zombie plague uh D, D story arc and so i started like mapping on a timeline like okay so after the stuff that they deal with right now what is going to happen next how is this zombie plague going to progress and like I'm just trying to think like the most and like I, I I basically had like windows of like this could happen anytime between this time and this time but like it gets bad real fast yo zombie plagues are no shit <laughs> that's what I learned this week is that really zombie plague, plagues are like this it's really like <laughs> it's a small chunk I was just, I was just thinking about like 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 I mean essentially it's like taking the the pandemic and like amplifying it right in terms of contagion um there's no cure it's extremely contagious um there nobody knows that it's happening and there's no form of communication right because unlike now there's like the internet like you know in a in a pre-technology in a pre-technology society there is no internet there's no like and messages take a long time and like the zombies could get there before the messenger gets there or the zombie could be or the messenger could be a zombie so like <laughs> like it just it it's bad it gets real bad real fast and like you 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 offset that with like okay well there's magic exists so like surely there's like some defense but there's not a spell that like that will like wipe out disease in like a huge group of people. Everything is contained to like a single individual. So it's sort of like, like individually inoculating like certain people. And like, if you're doing it that slow, that is bad. <laughs> so stuff gets bad real fast. <laughs> kind of <laughs> like, I'm you're trying to like- writing think, optimistic, like, optimistic stories is what I'm- I'm trying to think of like what the end result is. Like, like how, like, okay, where did this story end up? Because now I've started, now I'm in it, right? Like now I've started it and it, there's no turning back. So like, where's the end goal? Um, and trying to figure out like ways that like the players could, um, I don't know, like mass inoculate people or something. And I'm like thinking like beyond a divine intervention, I'm not, and like just straight up lockdown, like all the cities just lock down uh, and then like send out people to kill all the zombies. Cause there's no, like, there's no curing them either is the other thing. Like once you've got it, you've got it. Like I made it real nasty. <laughs> um, uh, like besides like just locking down cities and like then sending people out there to go and, and like fight the zombies and while every city is in lockdown there's not like there's it's there's no good alternatives i love that you've kind of boxed yourself into this corner of pessimism <laughs> that like you're you're going i mean like you're going to have to get out of somehow but like <laughs> but it's gonna be hard yeah yeah yeah, that's really, I don't know if like my head was in that place at the beginning and now I'm like at the end, I'm like, whoa, dude, what is your problem? <laughs> there's no, there's no like, there's no happy ending of a zombie story though. <laughs> Other than everybody's dead. <laughs> everybody's not going to die. I, I promise, I promise you that everybody's not going to die. Um, but I'm like, it's, it's, yeah. Um, that's what I've been writing about lately. Um, I was going to talk about something earlier. Um, I don't even remember what it was. Oh, uh, edge case gods. Um, I was going to say that I've been also, um, doing some research about edge case gods. Uh, I love that phrase. <laughs> Not in the, this album is amazing. <laughs> not 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 Nordic gods though. Um, I w I was, what was it? Um, oh, there is uh, also for D and D. Um, 
there is a uh, a creature in in Dungeons and Dragons called an abolith, which is like this ancient uh, water based thing that like uh, communicates telepathically and like can can take over people and like is like a big mental. So like in in my campaign, my other campaign with with the family. Um, there they had this object that was actually like sort of like a petrified aboleth like the it was a stone but the aboleth was inside the stone um and it was trying to get out it was trying to like communicate and like take people over and whatever and they gave it to this uh gold dragon who had been guarding the 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 gold hoard of of money that had been saved by the previous uh speaker of of the city or whatever uh that he had just like uh, squirreled away and he had this dragon guarding it basically and um, so they gave it to him and the abolus is like or the stone because they didn't know what to do with it the stone is like oh here's a really powerful creature that I can just take over and like I rolled for it at the time um, and and like yeah the, the the creature took and so like my whole like that that plot line is all about like um, like okay so now the abolus is out and is controlling this massively uh, powerful creature so like he's going to come back around at the end at some point but I was trying to think of like some really cool name to give him um, and so uh, the name that like I I was thinking about was Shub Naguroth because I knew I basically know that name from death metal. <laughs> Morbid Angel is, is what I know about Shub Naguroth. Um, so I looked up Shub Nagu and I knew it was Lovecraftian. Um, but the thing is that Lovecraft didn't know anything about it either. Like Lovecraft only mentioned it like two or three times and then other authors took that and made it into a thing. Um, so I was trying to think of like, if it was something that would make sense. Like, I mean, I don't even care. It could be any Lovecraftian of other whatever old one. Um, but Shub Naguroth sounded pretty cool. To, if I was going to name it a thing, like, sure, it's Shub Naguroth. It sounds really big and intimidating, and, and that's, that's the name of the Avalith. Um, so I was, I went, I was down uh, a Edge Case Gods uh, rabbit hole uh, this week as well. It was really weird that, like, um, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, uh, like, like, there's a whole lot of stuff that, like, he just didn't write. This other people wrote. Or, like, he wrote for other people, too. Like, he, like he wrote stuff. But then he like wrote other things for like just on other names and like other people wrote for his stuff and like that's it's just weird like why is it all like this contained thing I don't know I never read Lovecraft never I mean like I've I guess dabbled but you just dabbled in Lovecraft kind of like yeah dabbled in Lovecraft um just to get like basic references but like it's not really me I've only Wikipedia HP Lovecraft like I know the, <laughs> I know I know what it is like I know what the idea of call of cthulhu and like the concept and um but like my only direct interaction with it is is the way that like the watchman sort of like uses that lovecraftian cosmic horror in in that mm. book yeah calling it a book um like that's my only yeah, like, like i've never actually it's good to know stuff like that for like the family tree like, yeah the influences i think but Gary's furiously coding. Yeah, his... what are you up to, Gary? <laughs> I are you transcribing everything we're saying? Yeah, I'm not. I'm sorry. I got we got this. I I'm sort of keeping an eyeball on some server loads right now because because I have to. I don't really have to. I have to. I feel obligated to. Mm -hmm. Um. So musician. So you think that the the uh, act of music musicking is what makes you a musician? nothing about like performance or distribution or anything it's just about no god no no i mean like like is an artist not an artist until their art is like purchased like no like no. there's no there's no commercial aspect that makes you an artist there's no com i mean and i'll love it might it that. might be it might be an artist isn't an artist until their art is seen even by one other person like a musician is. I don't musician. think that's true, though. But that, but that might be that might be pushing pushing it too uh, too far as well. Like, well, so there's artists. I, I mean, does like it Emily Dickinson if... didn't like give her poetry to anybody before she died. I don't think. But that doesn't make her not a poet. Right. Like, does your art need to be seen in your life to make you an artist? No. Yeah. No. Absolutely not. I mean, music is kind of hard, to, a little bit hard to hide because it's loud. It's now, well, it's now, like, you know, like, 
even if it's a solo act, like it's sort of hard to contain the sound. Like a page has, has, you know, parameters and your pen or pencil can't leave that, you know, it's not like, it's not like you're like, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's like, a, like that can be a very private piece of art because you can, you can contain it, you know, um, music is a bit harder to contain, but even still, like, even if you're only playing and it's like only your family hears you only play when like, you're the only person home, whatever, you know, I still think that that, that, that artistry, like that thing, you know, makes you a musician. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, so I struggle with, and, and, and I say this having struggled with for a long time, feeling like not really a musician because like initially, like I, I got into college on French horn. Right. But I'm a college dropout. That's not a surprise. <laughs> I think everybody knows that. And, uh, and I like, you know, on French horn, I, uh, I, I mean, that was what I did. And, and at the end of the day, like, um, uh, like I could read music and, and whatnot, but I mean, I was, I was not like, and I sang in the acapella choir in college and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, I wasn't a musician because I wasn't doing commercial music, right? Was, was the thought in my head. And then I learned to play guitar and even that, like learning to play guitar, like I'm not a great guitar player, whatever. It's fine. I really enjoy doing it. I have fun, especially playing with other people, you know, like there's something that clicks there, but that's also like, well, but it's not, you know, I'm not a musician. And then there was this like point where, where like <laughs> I had that in my head. Uh, isn't it like as I say, my, it, I realize my it's school of music, it sounds my school of but, music is is a combination of punk rock and uh, experimental music. So like my whole like uh, approach to creating music is all about making shit up on the fly. That is my genre. <laughs> like no rules no no sheet music no no nothing just like make shit up break shit like make sounds that appeal to you at the time that is that is my genre so like <laughs> having this level of like well i'm not a musician i can i mean i play five 15 20 different instruments and i can read sheet music and chord progressions and like all this but i'm not a musician because you know thing that is it's like okay if you're not a musician because of that stuff then what the hell am i because i'm just making i'm just like pounding on the keyboard i mean like <laughs> but that just goes I, well, to how insidious kind of imposter syndrome or whatever it is like the our inner gremlins are because you're doing yourself a disservice and then by proxy when you end up sharing it with people they're like oh shit like this guy doesn't think he's a magician well then i'm definitely not like and, and the thing is well, the only thing that makes me think that i i might be a musician is because i actually had feedback from another musician who i actually like quite a bit and like because he he uh like i've i've known him on twitter for forever and and um uh we we chatted a, a number of times and he um i had him he he mixed one of, he produced one of my albums, uh, remix album, uh, and made some remixes for me. And he, and he was like, yeah, like your stuff is really, really good. Like, uh, it's, it's raw, but it's really good. And like, that was like amazing feedback to, to get from somebody who like literally gets paid to make music and like has had his stuff on various TV shows and stuff like, you know, and like he made this amazing, uh, sort of cinematic orchestral, uh, version of one of my song which is like honestly like the most like that is like i still it's still my favorite thing in the world because like it's something that i created but it's like like retooled in a different way to make it like something else and like beautiful and cinematic and it just yeah it's so i will say that part of part of this for me was like uh one of my, one of my, uh, I would say my best friend, I'm a guy I've known for 20 years, right? Like graduated, you know, uh, I mean, he's been a musician by any definition I've ever used in my life, right? No matter where it falls, uh, the entire time. I mean, he just, he picks up an instrument and he can play it. Like, you know, like he hears it and he's like, fiddles with the keyboard. He's like, oh yeah. And then suddenly like, it's all there. And, uh, and I mean, you know, on everything. Um, so there's like a, in the early days when I was playing with music, early days, you know, like in my twenties, 
what a weird episode this has become. Um, <laughs> like play, playing with music, but not really playing music. Like it was always just intimidating. Like, oh, I want to try and capture this sound, right? Like, and he could be like, oh yeah. And 15 seconds later, it was there. Whereas like, I could see this hill that I had to climb to get to that point and figure right. out how to make that. And it was just so, so obviously I wasn't a musician because I couldn't do that, you know? Um, which, which, uh, which I mean, also would like, I, I think mirrors a lot of the early part of my dev career, but also I think a lot of people's dev careers, because if you're, if you're, you can't help but compare, like you just, it's just, it's human nature, right? You'd be like, you, you, you look and you see what's, what, what someone is, is doing, maybe perhaps achieving, right? And you can't, you can't help but compare. And it's, it's, uh, that sucks. Like, like, ah, here's another take on it. Here's another take on it. So I was talking to a friend yesterday in, uh, where does he live? Windsor. Um, and uh, we were talking about, yeah. Oh, okay. Just, just yeah. double checking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he, um, uh, we worked together at Tribe for a while, but he doesn't work there anymore. I don't either. Why did he leave Tribe? Maybe he left like a year ago. I don't know. But we have these hangouts from time to time. And so uh, he's like doing this like entrepreneur path right now. And so he's really like doing the thing where it's like, that's a lonely track, you know, yeah, like you're not, you don't have people to bounce your ideas off of and validate and like wrestle with and, and get, you know, move the ball forward. Like at the end of the day, you go, like you look at like what's happened and you can solely base it on your efforts, successes for the day, you know, like that's it. You're the only one moving the yardstick. Uh, and so as a result of that, like we had this conversation about, um, I don't remember what it was. We were just, we were just talking about that, that those emotions and feelings. Um, so, uh, he mentioned this, this, uh, question that someone asked him one time, uh, when he was kind of complaining, he said, someone asked me like, is it, is it good to be Nick? And, uh, and I thought about that and I like, I thought about that question, right? Like, is it good to be, and then say your name, like, Mm. And so I felt silly doing it. But after this call with him yesterday, I said it out loud and like asked myself, felt absolutely ridiculous doing it. But like, but holy shit, it's cool. Cause like, if you step back and you get like, and then think about in the context of externalizing, like, well, am I a musician? Am I a programmer? Am I whatever label it is? Uh, God, this took a weird fucking turn today. Um, <laughs> but like externalizing that, like, you know, is it good to be Gary? Like, hell yeah. Like, that was really, that was really cool. That was the highlight of my yesterday. I'm glad we had this talk. Thanks, Amir. <laughs> <laughs> and with that. Had... Oh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I was just going to close the show. Uh, <laughs> listen, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, have you only, you said you've only read the first Austin Kleon book? I have. Yeah. And it was because my friend Evan, who's like the super musician, handed it to me this weekend and said, I think you need to read this. Nice. Yes. Yeah. 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 So are you like, have, I, I'm assuming you've read it? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's one of the many things that I feel like the people I know are immersed in is at some point between like the yoga teacher, life coaches, pod of people <laughs> but it's super helpful because i think it breaks down a lot of core concepts that like prevent people from being creative or exploring certain aspects of things and lets you like maybe adds an element of play back into it because at some point we get old enough that like we forget to just do things because of how it feels instead of like like the outcome or the end results we forget that like it's totally fine to suck at stuff mm. <laughs> um you know it's just like it's kind of the all those like little core things that like and then when you do them as an adult you feel ridiculous but you're also like oh god this feels great like and the people i look up to the most are the people who are able to like harness that energy and like, just go into that state of flow and just not care. And I'm like, oh yeah, more of that, please. <laughs> so state of yeah, flow, like this is a phrase I've heard a lot recently. Sorry, Chris, go ahead. 
I was just gonna say, or or you get to be an adult and uh, and you start doing a thing, and you're like, oh, this is fun. How do I make money at this? Because <laughs> that's the that's the adult response. It's like imperative. Yeah. How, how do I yeah. make money doing this thing that I like doing? I'm like, well, maybe maybe you don't, and maybe yeah. you know, just be okay. And it's that oh, thing of yeah. like you have to be passionate about what you make money at, also, which is yeah. like not not a true thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it feels true. I mean, like it's lovely if that's the case. Right. But <laughs> but a job can be a job. Yeah, a job can yeah. be a job. Yeah, it's good to have from time to time. And I think like inherently if I think I think if you're finding balance elsewhere, like I think sometimes you do find excitement, even if you're not overly excited about like the job. Like there are times where you're like, Oh yeah, this actually is okay or good or even great. But it doesn't have to be. Or you find meaning in what it allows you to do in your not job time. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that's also really valuable depending on your situation. Yeah. Oh, but if you wanted to learn more about flow, there's um, probably, I'm going to probably butcher the last name, but it's Mikhail Chicken Cementi. I can, I can write it down for you. Um, <laughs> um, but he wrote, he's like a positive psychologist. Um, he wrote all about the state of flow and it's basically like when the difficulty level is ideal and you lose your state yourself in the state of flow. Cause the difficulty level is just such that it's challenging but not too challenging to frustrate you. And the enjoyment level is just such that you can like fully immerse yourself in it. Well, that's fascinating. I didn't, I didn't think about like challenge being a, a, a position in there. Yeah. It's interesting because like oftentimes like, and I, I think of crossword puzzles for some reason, cause I'm like a huge crossword puzzle fanatic, but like if there's a crossword puzzle, that's like challenging, but you can kind of like eke your way through it. I'll be entranced for like three hours, but if it's so difficult off the bat that I'm just like, no, forget it. Like, I'll just put it down. I just won't care. <laughs> that's, that's, that's me and Sudoku. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I so can't. I feel like I feel like there are things then. So like art's one of those where the the challenge level adjusts to your experience. Like because you're always reaching for that next like breakthrough, right? Like it's constant. It's you're never. I mean, I would think like musically. Like I I look at where I was a year ago versus where I am now when I play, and the things that I think about when I'm playing are different because the things I thought about last year are now automatic or have become part of me and so I'm listening or trying different things that are yeah that challenge level is, is like automatically had, dynamically adjustable if you had told me before uh before 2020 that I would write 30,000 words in a month I would have told you that you were nuts <laughs> but look at you now but that's literally what I did and like yeah it's it's a and d adventure but that doesn't make it make it not 30,000 words Roughly. But see, like, so if someone goes like, hey, are you a writer? Would you right. say yes? And circle back to I don't our... know. That's the thing. And like, it, it doesn't feel... Oh, like man. Chris, I'm a, you're I'm a, I'm a TTRPG creator. No. <laughs> no. That's... <laughs> no. Chris, you're Chris, definitely you're a writer. writer. <laughs> you're a writer, man. Wow. I feel like we've had some breakthroughs today, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, joking aside, I certainly have. Um, I made a joke. I was talking to someone and they were just like, oh, are you in therapy right now? And I was just like, no, I do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Same day. <laughs> <laughs> it's this thing called Bin Jazz. <laughs> bin Jazz. Bin Jazz. That should have been the topic is Bin Jazz. What is Bin Jazz? I was trying to truncate the title in a cool way. It didn't. Work it's out. cool. <laughs> no, uh, we made a horrible choice. Don't do it. <laughs> I like I like though that 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 the title of the show finally made it into the show uh, when you were talking about the binary of being uh, a, a musician or a not musician. My my mind was immediately like binary jazz. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I didn't think about that. I don't know. I don't know. It's really like, fun. I, I don't, as an outsider, outsider friend, whatever, um, musician, writer, like you're all these things to me, like as the outsider. Uh, by outsider, I mean like the person that's not in your brain. Um, 
<laughs> kind of crowded in here recently. You're welcome. You're welcome that I'm not in your brain. <laughs> um, you guys, yeah, you're just, you're totally those things. So it's just kind of, it's always so baffling when I'm like, wait, you don't think you're a writer? You don't think you're a musician? Like how many, like, I mean, just the pure fact that you own so many instruments. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, how can you how can you have that many instruments and not be a musician? <laughs> like, I, even if you never played like, them. I respond like, well, yeah, but I started flute like two years ago, and I never really got off the ground with it. Like, so, so, like, so we have. <laughs> there's we had this a like rule. whole list of failures, right? That that's it's. Why is it so easier to look at that list than the other list? I, but isn't I, a failure just a lesson? I don't understand. I was in a I band. I have very good lessons because I still I can't was, play it. I was in an experimental <laughs> rock band in college, the last year in college, that sort of came out of these discussions that I was having with my friends about experimental music. And so we made a rule that anyone can be a loaf man. We were the loaf men. Uh, anyone can be a loaf man as long as they can make sound. <laughs> so like, even if you are dead, you could still be a loaf man because you could fall over. Like anyone that could make sound could be a loaf man. It, all, all that was required was making sound. And that was like the fundamental crux of, of, of like the philosophy. And, and we swapped instruments and we like played in the stairwell of the, of, of, of the, just the basement stairwell and like uh, did all sorts of crazy stuff and like made it performative, even though nobody was watching and like, um, yeah. And, and it was, it was, ridiculous and stupid and also like really freaking amazing and like kind of fundamentally changed how I approached making music because it was like well if anything can if anything goes anything goes you know oh man yeah so like you could have this Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.